Now, from a career of hitting the tournament circuit, I went on to become a teacher uh, and a tournament promoter. And um, I was the very first in Detroit. You know how you have the Special Olympics for uh, children with special needs? I was the very first one with my tournament, more on the floor, to have a special division in karate tournaments for those with special needs and the autistic. I taught many autistic children to feel good about themselves and to build their confidence. One young man I had, Dale, when, I, when he first came to me, he never spoke or uttered a word since he was born. And I worked with him and uh, it was just an amazing how God works in so many different ways when he first uttered his very first words on that dojang floor. Now I want to share with you a video. Now this is from a fundraiser. Now the person in the background that is saying quiet, quiet, his name is Sifu Dukes. He is a high-ranking uh, eighth degree black belt uh, under the legendary uh, Ed Parker. He was in the movie, uh, the fight scene in the park, the movie Billy Jack. He brought his son to me, Sifu Duke, to train, and I was training his son. And I want to share this video with you real quick. Now, in this video, uh, as you can see, that this is my channel. It's my YouTube channel, Hyungs, H-Y-U-N-G-S, and it's titled Fundraiser Brick Break Grand Master Zacher. Now, this was my school, one of my chains of uh, schools. The voice you hear in the background is uh, Sifu Dukes. Now the voice you hear saying quiet, quiet, is Sifu Dukes, uh, who is a student, high-ranking student of the legendary Ed Parker, American Kempo. And he was in the fight scene in the park in the movie, Billy Jack. Here I'm breaking a stack of concrete slabs to raise money uh, for charity. Let me uh, play the video for you. Now, continuing on, from being a teacher, I, that was my lifelong dream. I always taught free. I taught in rec centers. I taught at the um, American GI Forum on West Lafayette Street in Detroit, Michigan. I had another club going at the Latino Outreach Center in Detroit, Michigan for poor and impoverished young children. And we took them off, off the street. We took gang members who would bring their children to me to teach them this form of martial arts and self-defense so they wouldn't turn out like them. And I ended up getting the gang members, the parents, in to the classes as well. So many we taught and they had come to salvation. But I always taught free of charge. I never charged. And my brother, before he died, he knew it was my dream to have a big commercial school. And it was right before he was killed by a drunk driver. And he made me promise him that I would live my dream. I couldn't do this, uh, being intoxicated or under the influence of alcohol. I couldn't have achieved all of this, living a life of alcoholism or drugs. Well, my brother was killed by a drunk driver. That's why this is so hurtful and painful to me. The one thing that he and I, would we, we made a vow we would never touch alcohol because of our father being abusive and being an alcoholic. I went on from there to form winning, winning and achieving Hall of Fame awards and uh, re, uh, being put in Black Belt Magazine articles in Taekwondo Times. And I went on to earn an eighth degree Black Belt, eighth Don in uh, Tong Sudo. And it was four years ago in Detroit, Michigan, when uh, a group of my peers awarded me a ninth don 
uh, in recognition of all that I accomplished in the martial arts and helping young people. And I went on to form. Now here's the beginning of what I think led me to this ministry. I remember the words of my brother. I formed the International Tang Sudo Martial Arts Society. We started out with a few members, one in Minnesota, one member in Minnesota that grew to members in every state of the United States. I had members in Korea, in Okinawa, and I still do. I still have many, many, many black belts who are under my direction. Today, We, I had members in Okinawa, in Thailand, in France, in the United Kingdom, just about around the globe. And it grew internationally. And I opened my first commercial school. I no longer taught free to the impoverished children. I taught them about Jesus. And I was so well known in the martial arts, in a Tang Sudo, especially but it grew and then I had another school I had a business partner I was training back then um, uh, back after 9-11 the federal air marshals how to defend themselves in a seated position on a plane on a mock airplane and with my background it led me to very good jobs in security and law enforcement and uh, uh, a career through my training, but one school led to two and led to three, and all of a sudden the money was coming in, and then something happened. I forgot the people of the inner cities, and I still kept my Bible. I belonged to the, uh, I was teaching at uh, various churches as well. Um, I forgot to preach Jesus Christ and salvation. I forgot to reach out to the poor and to the homeless. And I had to be pruned for this ministry. I had it all taken away. I lost the house. I lost everything. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't practice. If you're a Christian, you shouldn't practice karate. You, you don't have to make it an idol. You don't have to make it a religion. It's a way of life. It's a way of keeping healthy. But today, I, I no longer train. I no longer practice anymore. I want to come back and help those in the inner cities, the poor, the needy. I was homeless. And that's where my ministry is now. And it was because of the big, all of a sudden, I had everything I ever wanted. I had the money, the house, the cars, the sports cars, the motorcycles. But because I went to a commercial building and a chain of buildings that I couldn't do if I was drunk or intoxicated, I lost it all. So I just want to, if I was an alcoholic, I couldn't have achieved numerous Hall of Fame awards and the recognition that I did through all the blood, sweat, and tears. My body today, I feel the pain. My knees are gone. My shins, we used to break uh, train. We'd break glass Coke bottles over our shins. I would break concrete slabs to raise money for charities. Uh, I think the record, I, I had 15 uh, two-inch concrete slabs I broke with a palm strike. I feel it now. And I wouldn't change anything because I touched a lot of lives and I helped a lot of people. But should we train in martial arts today? I think as long as you don't make it a religion, and you train to better yourself and to have a clear mind and a body, a temple free of drugs and alcohol. I'm done now. I'm all done with this. So if it appears I'm intoxicated. It's, I'm not. I've lived a healthy life, a physical life, a good life. But circumstances led to where I have no uh, dental insurance and uh, I wanted to share my story with you and I'm going to put this to rest. God bless.